What is up? So this is the first episode of my podcast that I'm going to be calling... I'm not sure yet. Uh, I either want to call it Where Am I? Or Thinking Aloud. Or... Yeah, that's pretty much it. I have no idea. Any other suggestions, please, you know, let me know. Um, so I am in Glacier National Park, and um, I tried to start recording this, and then it kind of totally was terrible, because I never realized how hard it was to actually consistently talk for... 10 minutes. In 8th grade, I did a project uh, where I had to choose like a career, and I had to make a pro- like a, a presentation, and the presentation had to be I think 8 to 10 minutes long, and I think for like a solid 30 to 40 seconds, I just stood there without saying anything. Um, much like I'm doing right now. I just paused and I just, no words would come to my head. So, uh, I don't know, I still got it. I still got a B though, so that, I mean, that's like, that's decent. Um, but look at that, I mean, it's already been a minute 30. Like, that's, that's pretty solid. So, um, yeah, I'm in Glacier. Uh, I totally missed my turn, but I just uh, got back to it. So we are heading to Two Medicine Lake in Glacier. Um, supposedly it's a pretty cool spot, so we will see. But once I get to the ranger station, I'm probably going to have to turn this off. But this was kind of a little introductory. I want to, I kind of wanted to just test the audio out. Um, I'm filming this with my GoPro strapped to my uh, rear view mirror. It's literally duct taped to my rear view mirror. So <laughs> we'll see how that works. Um, another thing, it's going to be kind of hard doing this while driving just because like it's kind of distracting a little bit but I feel if I just focus on the road and can talk uh, talk um, basically my thoughts then we should be good like I've, I don't know because I think when I drive so it's like is talking really any different I don't know stay tuned to find out <laughs> um, anyway yeah, so this is kind of just a test, and um, we'll see. But Glacier has been awesome. This place is literally, I've wanted to come to this place forever. Uh, I think when I was a little kid, if I could go anywhere in the world, this was the place. Um, the glaciers have always just been so fascinating to me. Just... Uh, like the difference between an active glacier and an unactive glacier and like just like how I, they're just so interesting like I can't even I can't even think of words that's how much I know about them uh, <laughs> so yeah it, it's um it's kind of sad to see I've talked to a couple rangers I've read some stuff at the visitor centers and um there was like 50 or something active glaciers only like 50 years ago. Um, but now that number is down to like 12 or something, which is just super sad. Um, and I still need to ask someone what the difference between an active glacier and like an unactive glacier is. Because I, I'm not really sure, but I, I mean, obviously, like, an active glacier probably continues to produce more, um, glacier. <laughs> like, more ice and stuff. Uh, and an unactive one probably can't produce anymore, so it just continues to recede, um, and can't stay. basically continuing to create stuff so like create more of itself I, I don't know the freezing process or um, what it goes through but I imagine it's something like that I need to ask and I will definitely 
definitely let you know when I figure out. But other than that, this place has been awesome. Um, I You should come here soon because all of these glaciers will be gone in like probably like 10 years. So if you want to come, do it now. And it's kind of weird. Like usually, usually people don't try and get people to go places, you know, like... Like, if I go to a really cool spot, I'm usually like, I don't want a lot of people to come here, but, like, this time, I think you should come here. But, one thing I do have to say is they have shuttles that go, if you come in, like, the summer, because going to the Sun Road is usually closed in the winter, but uh, if you come in the sun, summer, I would definitely take those shuttles, uh, because, it, I mean, it just makes so much more sense or at least carpool like I'm here alone so it doesn't make sense for me to drive up the mountain like a bunch of times when I could just take a shuttle and not waste as much gas like it just I mean it just makes sense uh, especially when though that's like the main reason that the park is or that the gl glaciers are receding so fast it's just like the consumption of fossil fuels and um, climate change basically due to that and due to the production of plastics and I pretty much since the industrial revolution these things have been kind of receding which sucks but uh, it's kind of how it is so you have a chance <coughs> definitely come <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, but, um, yeah, it's, I, it's super nice, like, they have so many good, uh, like, they just, it's cool to see that the park is, like, super resourceful when it comes to stuff like that, like having a shuttle service and um, you look at it with some of their visitor centers, they've actually like gone as far to, uh, not gone as far, but just really made sure that they like reclaimed the environment around them that they kind of tore up to build these visitor centers and roads and stuff, but they have really like reclaimed the areas that they've dug up and just some of those spots that they necessarily didn't have to clean up they have definitely made like a very valiant effort to kind of restore it to its natural uh, kind of how it naturally was uh, before they before they built those buildings and roads and stuff um, so it's really cool to see like the conservation efforts that they're putting forth oh information. I'm okay, thank you. You too. So I was at this uh, ranger talk last night and I guess it wasn't last night, it was the night before, but uh, like this ranger was talking about how basically the national parks order from the government is to make the parks safer and enjoyable for the public. So, like, that means that if a bear attacks someone, like, they need to basically euthanize or kill that bear um, in order to restore that feel of safety for the public, which is weird because there's definitely two arguments to that, um, where one side is, no, the bears were here first, um, this is their habitat, like, we are intruding on their homes, basically. And then the other side of that, which is what the government says, and it's to keep these places safe for the people. And I'm definitely more on the side of this is the bear's home. Like, if we are trespassing on their, basically their environments, like, and 
you get attacked because you're, I don't know, there's a lot of stupid people here. That's one thing I've really noticed is there are a lot of just not smart individuals that come to these places. Um, which not everybody, obviously, but like, like there's a lot of people who, you know, they're not, you know, the smartest, but, um, so if a bear attacks you, whether you're approaching it or trying to take a photo of it or trying to take a photo with it, which is even stupider, um, and that bear gets agitated and attacks you, um, Basically, it's like it was the bear's fault, which is super ridiculous. But um, what's cool is there have only been like 10 bear attacks in the last 50 years, or it might have been more than that. But it's been a really long time since a bear attack. Uh, so they haven't had to do that very recently, I don't think. Uh, I think like 2000 six like late 2000s maybe was the last one so it's been a decent amount of time i think um i'm not super sure on dates actually but i think that's what he was saying if i'm wrong i will tell you right now 